First, I'd like to um, state that the definition, the overall definition of mainstreaming is, according to Roger, um, a researcher in 1993, um, according to Rogers, mainstreaming has, a generally, has generally been used to refer to a selective placement of specialized education students in one or more regular classes. Uh, mainstreaming um, generally assumes that the student must learn his or her opportunity to be mainstream through the ability to keep up with his work and assign, is assigned by a teacher uh, to the other students in the class. So basically for this there's an overall, um, there's overall, not dispute, but um, Everyone thinks that like all the main, all disabled kids are actually mainstream, but that's not the case. But I'll go further into that later in the discussion. So, for my first, for their significance claim, they stated for the first one is that disabled um, students' needs are not being met, are not being met, but that's quite the opposite because. Actually, what happens is that disabled, disabled kids are actually benefiting both um, both the teachers and non-students and then themselves are being benefited, and I'll go into that. But for this part, I wanted to talk, about, talk to you guys about how um, there's a small, per this is only a small percentage, or this problem is not as um, widely um, thought of. The, the population of the disabled kids are about, according to like the U.S. Department of Education in 1997, is that there's only 12% of students enrolled in American schools in 1993 to 1994 that were vaccinated as um, disability students. And in comparison with that, is that within current times too, I also have a source, um, this is by um, the U.S. Department of Education too, that it's 12.8% now, so that's only a 0.6. So it's not much of an increase. And so for, so I want to talk to you guys about the IDA, which is basically the, um, the act that enables these students to be mainstream. And for basically what it is, is that it's a federal law enacting, which was enacted in 1990, which protects the rights of students with disabilities by giving them, by ensuring them that everyone receives appropriate public education. And to add on that, um, the IDA, which is I said that Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, um, they state that they mandate that all um, children, regardless of disability, has the right to free appropriate education in the least restrictive environment, or like least restrictive, I mean. So basically that means that they're not put in these institutions, that they're given this right, they're not like um, forced to be put into these institutions. Basically, what it is is that they they could be put into any school that they want as long as it as long as they can make the meet the requirements. And there's several tests for that. And um, the purpose that IDA um, provides is that to it ensures that all children with disabilities have available to them them a very appropriate public education, which is emphasized special education and. It's related services designated to meet their unique needs. Second is the to assure that the rights of children with disabilities and their parents are protected. Third, to um, assist states and local local government um, to provide for the educational of all children with disabilities. And third, and fourth, the to assess and ensure that the effectiveness of these efforts to all education to all, to educate all children with disabilities. So and I'd like to um, say that there's different kinds of disabilities. So as I was saying, not all are put into these mainstream into mainstreaming. 
So um, according to the IDA in 1991, there's 13 categories of disabilities, which is autism, deaf, deafness and blindness, um, hearing impairments, retardation, mental retardation, several dis multiple disabilities with orthopedic impairment and other health impairment, seriously emotional disturbance, disturbed individuals, uh, special learning disabilities, speech or language impairment, and trauma, brain injuries. So, before, so. For the qualifications, um, according to Stephanie Borman, who is a teacher at Texas Women University, basically, what she says is a comprehensive assessment is perhaps the most critical piece in decisions regarding the least restrictive environment. A student cannot and should not be placed into a learning environment without comprehensive um, ad adapted physical education assessment. And the legislation mandates that learners with disabilities must be included whenever possible in state mandated assessments. So there's a test that they actually go through to, they actually just place them within the, well, they first um, evaluate them on the first impression, and then they put them into a classroom for a couple weeks to actually see if, they're, if they actually could uh, manage their time and keep up with the work. And then based on that, they either keep up um, with the class or they're put in a separate class. For And my last point is that, like, for um, non-disabled kids, they they actually um, their needs are met, and um, there's evidence to that too. And from um, Elizabeth Winstrom, um, she says that not only does it help students with special needs, but it also helps regular education students as well by teaching them how to work with others and who are different from them. And teaches the comparison student comparison with acceptance uh, patients. And this basically demonstrates that there actually is, um, this is successful.